So, uh, to get started, um, I did go ahead and give you a staffing update, and uh, it is not good. Um, uh, you know, obviously, we continue to uh, try different uh, avenues to uh, attain um, team members uh, for here. Obviously, our goal is to get the community back open all the way. I know a lot of you want to. Uh, see bars and restaurants and everything open and, and so do we so to, just to give you a little bit of an update um, currently for the front of the house for Fitz he has opened a full-time supervisor eight full-time servers six part-time servers a full-time bartender a part-time bartender and two part-time hosts 580 hours a week uh, chef over here, he's got a food buyer position. That food buyer does all the inventories, uh, assists Jonathan with place and the orders, puts all the products away um, when they come in. The big trucks come in on Tuesday and Thursday from uh, Cisco. Um, the other trucks are coming in spread out throughout the week as well. So that's what that person does. So currently, uh, chef is filling that role uh, along with all the other hats that he's wearing. So he's short a food buyer, he's, he's short a full-time sous chef, seven full-time cooks, two full-time dishwashers, and a part-time dishwasher. That's about 460 hours a week. Um, down in the health center, they're short a full-time food and beverage supervisor, six full-time servers, and two part-time servers for another 320 hours a week. So that comes out to about 1,360 hours a week, and it comes down to about 24 people per day that we're currently running short. Mm. So, um, you know, a lot, you know, we're, uh, you know, we're challenged with a lot of things, right? There's a lot of places around here um, that don't have to adhere to mandates like we do. Uh, we have the uh, pre-employment uh, background checks and testing that we need to go through. Uh, those are delayed, uh, you know, working with the state on some of those. Uh, if it's a person that's worked in multiple states to where they have to get background checks from multiple states, then that takes time. We've got some people that are taking up to three weeks to get through the pre-employment process, right? People want to, the people that do want to work, they're going to go find a job. They're not going to wait around three weeks for uh, us to come calling. I think these guys have done a great job keeping them in the loop and letting them know we're not just letting them sit there for three weeks and not communicating with them. Um, but we're faced with a lot of challenges uh, right now. Um, everybody uh, out there is recruiting uh, against us as we're recruiting against them. I read an article the other day that we are we are no longer uh, uh, interviewing candidates. We we are the candidate. They're they're interviewing us and they're selecting us now. So they completely flipped the tables, and it, you know that that really is the way that um, that it is. Um, I don't know if there are Starbucks drinkers in here, but the Starbucks down on Carruthers Parkway uh, shut down their store. They're open in their drive-through only six in the morning to two p.m. So even if you do the mobile app, you still have to get in that long line in the, of cars to pick up your uh, uh, coffee at the uh, drive-through window. 
Um, I've heard that, and I haven't been there, I don't know, but Chick uh, Chick-fil-A, or I've heard that they've reduced their hours in their stores. So when you got big names like Starbucks and Chick-fil-A and some of those that, um, you know, it, it, it's not just us, it's across the board, it's not just here, um, it's across the country. And, um, you know, some people say, well, you know, you use temp staff. Two of the cooks the chef's are using right now are temp staffs and have been temp staff. Uh, one of his dishwashers is too. Um, Fitz has got uh, uh, the girl Salma who's helping us out. She's a temp. The problem is, is the temp agencies are in the same boat that we are. Now we do a, we, we do a little bit okay during the week, but on the weekends, these people are committed to hotels downtown. Um, there was a report out from downtown the other day that the uh, average daily rate of the hotels downtown are exceeding the, uh, on the weekends, are exceeding the uh, average daily rates they had pre-pandemic. Now they struggle during the week where we get a little, you know, we get a little bit of a break and can, can get a little bit of the uh, uh, temp staff, but on the weekend, we're not getting any temp staff. They're all being utilized downtown. Now, what worries us further is as we go into the holiday season uh, beginning next week um, through Thanksgiving and through the first of the year, that's when all these Christmas parties are starting. So there is a big concern uh, on our part whether we're going to be able to even get uh, temp staff. So uh, I know Fitz has a couple ordered every night. Sometimes we get them, sometimes they don't. So. That's kind of where we are with staffing. I know it's not, it's not great news and everything else. Um, I do want to applaud these guys right here and the teams that they have, because there's a lot of people doing a lot right now to, uh, to take, care of, take care of everybody here. And a lot of people working six and seven days, a lot of people working 11, 12 hour days. Um, it, it's, it's really tough right now. So um, we'll continue. You're welcome. Thank you. But, um, we'll, we'll, you know, I keep saying that, we'll keep swinging away, but you know, uh, hopefully it changes soon. I've never seen anything like this, I, you know, I don't know. And then I read, a, uh, I read an article the other day, they estimated a million people left the service industry in August and a million people left the hospitality industry in September. Back to back months. It was kind of scary. So, anyway, enough with that doom and gloom. Supply chain update, uh, we had another call this past Tuesday uh, with the food and beverage directors across LCS and the Cisco vice president was on there. They, they don't anticipate any supply chain improvements till probably summer of next year. Yeah. It is kind of what they're hearing and kind of what they're forecasting. Uh, a lot of the, you know, their largest food buyer in the country, a lot of them, um, the companies they utilize, the Butterballs and the Hormel, um, Oscar Meyer, what were some of the other companies he named? Um, Campbell's, you know, the Campbell's soups. A lot of these um, big food um, suppliers, uh, what they're doing to offset some of this stuff is they're really streamlining and cutting back on the different lines they're carrying. So Campbell's, instead of carrying 120 soups, they, they, you know, they might cut it down to I don't know, 75, that's not a number they threw out or anything else, but Tyson, uh, Tyson Chicken's a big one. Um, they're not gonna carry, uh, you know, 150 different lines of chicken. They're, they're, they're gonna streamline that and, and get that down. It's the same thing, it's, you know, it's labor, it's transportation, it's, it's all the same stuff that you're hearing. Um, talked about uh, uh, beef, poultry, pork prices, um, they're not going to soften anytime soon. There is, uh, uh, you know, the the meat processing got hit hard by COVID. They were they're, they're, they got hit really hard, so they're, they're they're hurting with labor and trying to get these people to produce the products. The um, corn, the price of corn has gone up because the price of fertilizer has gone up. Uh, you got droughts out west, so the cattle can't feed on the grass, so now they got to grow more corn, and the fertilizer costs corn's doubled for bushels, so it goes on and on and on. Um, so um, we're exporting our beef to China instead of keeping it in our country, so 
<laughs> There's a lot of things that are driving the, these different prices and those supply chain issues as well. So we'll leave that at that. Uh, and again, I applaud Jonathan. He's doing a heck of a job in uh, you know trying to get this stuff in here and um, making sure that we have you know try to adhere to the accuracy of the menus and. He's kind of at the mercy of what comes in on that truck on Tuesdays and Thursdays. He, he can order it on Monday and Wednesday, and then it's a roll of the dice as whether that's actually coming in on Monday and Wednesday, or uh, coming in on Tuesday and Thursday. So, appreciate everything you've done. <laughs> I know it's not easy. The good news is Fitz isn't having any trouble getting beer, wine, or liquor, so. <laughs> so, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk about let's let's get into some better stuff. So Thanksgiving next week, um, the reservations are still available for all four time slots. So there's 11, 11 30, 12, and twelve thirty. So there are still time slots. The uh, order forms are going out in the mail today if they're not already out. Uh, for those of you that want delivery, you're, we ask that you turn your uh, order form in by uh, noon next Tuesday so that we can properly plan for that. So the order forms are in your mailboxes. There's also some in the mail rooms, and then there's a drop box in each of the uh, uh, mail rooms as well uh, for your orders. Those are, those are only for delivery. The menu is the same in the restaurant or for delivery, but we, we only need those forms filled out um, for delivery. Um, Thanksgiving, the 25th, so that's a big cutoff day for a lot of people. We, the market will not be open on the 25th, Thanksgiving. So if you have, if the 25th is your cutoff day and you, um, you, you want to you wanna spend your uh, allotment, uh, make sure that you have your orders in, please, by 10 o'clock on uh, Wednesday, the 24th, so that we can get those filled on the 24th. Um, what else? I think that's really, um, you know, I will ask people, you know, we, we've had some people, we, we miss stuff and we miss uh, getting stuff delivered. Um, I would ask you if, if, if you, if we miss something or if something is not to your satisfaction on your meal, please um, either uh, call the, the fireside grill, the hostess stand or the kitchen. Uh, the market closes at five. So if you're trying to get a hold of the market, please don't use that email that, that you use to order the food. Please don't email that because that's not being, uh, that's not being monitored by anybody um, after five o'clock. Um, so we want to make sure that your order is accurate. We want to make sure that you get taken care of. Uh, so please either call the kitchen or the fireside. Someone's going to answer those, those phones right there. I can give it to you right now, or the, um, you can just call the uh, receptionist. Do you want the number now? The uh, Fireside Grill hostess stand, 615-564-4949. And the kitchen is 615-564-4920. Six one five five six four four nine two zero, and that's the kitchen. And Chef's working on his, his team and properly answering the phone. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't know if they're in Touchtown. I know they're in the the directory that everyone has. And then um, actually uh, Burnett will be putting out the, the December calendar. So there'll be information in there on uh, Christmas, uh, the Christmas dinner. We anticipate doing the same thing that we're doing now uh, for Thanksgiving. And then um, I'm sure she'll have information on there on the New Year's Eve celebration, which will be nice that we'll be able to have this year. Fitz or Tyler or Jonathan, you, anything you want to add? Or? They're going to help out with the microphone, so if anybody uh, uh, will go through the uh, question and answers right now, if anybody has anything that we can help with.
Thank you. I'm on the welcoming committee, and it's become very obvious that we could use the community table. There are a lot of people moving into Redbud and filling out the vacancies in Magnolia, and some of them are very lonely, and they don't want to come down to the dining room because they're all by themselves. So I guess my question is, when can we have the community table here? We are looking at ways that we can do that. And, and now is it going to be a community table where anybody just walks in and sits down? That's probably not feasible. Um, what that does, if it's a six top, that just becomes six single tables again. So we're, we're looking at a way to maybe where people can sign up to dine at the community table and having a couple of different community tables and then have maybe one at five o'clock or maybe one at six o'clock and then people can sign up and that way they come in and that's treated as, as one table and they would need to be there. So we're looking at a couple of those things. Um, I know there's questions about when can we move on from the, the four tops as well. And then we're looking at a way to, to increase so that we have several uh, tables that can accommodate six people. The problem uh, with, with, the, with the four people in that, and I know that's gonna be a question is, is we start losing capacity in the dining room. So I've got residents in here and in the restaurant that say guests shouldn't be allowed. And I've got residents that want guests uh, allowed. And so what we're trying to do is to make as many seats available at, at the times that residents want to eat. And, and that's why we're trying to uh, accommodate and that's what we got the four tops for. So. It makes it very difficult. You start pushing tables together and, and then you lose capacity in the restaurant. So, but we are looking at ways to get the community table um, back up. I love sandwiches for lunch. I love to see the hot dogs on that menu online that you can get every day. Um, okay, we'll, we'll make a note of that and see if that's possible. Can everybody hear? She was she's requesting hot dogs on the uh, usually available list. Would it ever be possible to get the hot dog without having to have soup and salad on two sides? We are looking at that as well. Uh, we have had requests to go to more of an a la carte menu. Um, I think everybody remembers when we started the, you know, when the whole pandemic started and we went to only delivery and people were used to having the salad bar and we were delivering only meals. So I think we've kind of moved on from that. Um, so we're trying to um, figure out a way to where we can go to more of an a la carte option. So maybe a soup and salad's not included, but maybe two sides are. Um, obviously, we can't customize everybody's individual things, so there's different things that we're taking a, a look at. And then that would make it easier, you know, certainly at lunch and um, at, at dinner as well. I would point out, however, that every single thing on that menu, other than the I would call it the entree or the main thing is available individually. You can get soup, you can get salad, you can get vegetables, etc. If you want a hot dog, it's a good example. If you want a hot dog, you have to have super salad and two sides. If you want a, a dinner salad, you still have to have super salad and two sides. But everything other than the main protein or entree is available individually. Every day. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs>
And then, then the menu keeps giving. Let me go back. How many people are you short, Chef? <laughs> Before we start going through everybody's personal things of what they want to have, you know, all the time on the menu, you know, I, I can see it getting rotated through, but just to have everything. And I, there, there's another thing, too, and, and talking with the other food and beverage directors this past Tuesday on a call, there are a lot of communities that are still doing only the four selections a night. Is what they recommended during the pandemic. All right, we're, we're, we're changing during the pandemic. We were changing 15 items almost every week. Almost all of those 15 were changing every week. Now we're doing it every two weeks. So you know, there, there's some give and take. You know, you know, you want sliders on the menu every day, then something else. You know, something's got to come off, right? We we just can't. And and chef can work the sliders through as one of the menu options. We've got a list, we've got files for the menus that he's working on. He's already working on the menus for the beginning of December. As residents make suggestions and ideas to this, we've got a, we, we, we've got a list on there and we'll, we're, we write down, we put down the, uh, the suggestions. But we're never ever gonna be able to accommodate everybody's request for everything that should be on the, uh, um, you know, the usually available. You talk about a hot dog, it's not just a hot dog, you need the bun. You talk about sliders, you need buns, right? So there's a lot of things all of a sudden that, that you need to have on there at all times if it's going to be available. I just want to say that, well, first of all, I can't eat hot dogs and I can't eat sliders, so. <laughs> um, but I need to be um, gluten-free a lot of food allergies, and I just want to say thank you to you and Jonathan and the kitchen staff for all the options. I can always get salmon, which I eat so much of, and it's wonderful. And this two-week period, the beef tamales have just been awesome, and I so appreciate having a gluten-free option. And so I just am so grateful that with all of the, the negatives that you talked about, Mark, that I am just in dinner heaven. So thank you. You're welcome, thank you. I don't know if I need this, big. Uh, I'm especially pleased if Fritz is getting all the booze that we need. <laughs> Do I think I can add? I don't like to part thing, but I've been here a year and I've only seen one wine list, and that's about a year ago. And I, I don't even know what you've got in your closet up there. I mean, maybe if, if there's an update in there, we can see, see one sometime. Uh, and the other thing, when you, when you put on some very nice dinners in here, and I was wondering if some of the higher end wine could come in at the bars and those dinners so you could have a really nice meal and you go over and get. <laughs> Thank you for your feedback. Yes, that's something we can take a look at. He went some Petrus and uh, Rothschild. Or what else? What else can we do? <laughs> we get, uh, yeah, you know, we get to taste it to make sure that it's good, right? It can be served. <laughs> We do look forward to it. I think, you know, a couple of, we've done a really couple of nice dinners and it's fun to do. It, it's hard to do, um, you know, especially not knowing whether you're gonna have uh, service staff and you know, that's kind of why we've closed the, you know, closed the restaurant down on, the, on those evenings. And, um, you know, so that we can have fun in here and do, do some of those nice things. And we wanna do those, they're fun to do. Um, breaks you kind of out of your rut, and it, it is fun to do. Regarding the last formal dinner, which by the way was interesting, uh, but I'm wondering, this may be a facetious question, have we run out of saucers for coffee cups? Because they were not on the tables, and the coffee, did drip into laps. 
Just a question. Point well taken. <laughs> Uh, as soon as I get more staff, um, I think everybody in here, a lot of people. So we used to backfill our staffing on the weekends was a lot of our high school students. All right. A lot of the high school students, for whatever reason, um, a lot of them aren't 18. They need to have parental uh, consent to get the vaccine. You have to be vaccinated to work here. Uh, we do know that we've been challenged with that with some of our high school students. Their parents won't sign off on the vaccine, so they no longer work here uh, until they turn 18 and then get the vaccination, which a couple of them have told us they would do. Um, and then you don't have the uh, interest level on, uh, from the students as far as getting jobs right now. In talking to teachers here in Williamson County and coaches, uh, a lot of these kids are, not that they were forced to work by their parents, we know that a lot of the kids around here don't have to work, um, but everything's been so messed up with their last two years of schools that they're participating in athletics, they're participating in clubs, and they're, they're hanging out with their friends because so much has been disrupted over the past two years. So working or having a part-time job is not a priority of them. We used to do very well posting positions on next door and we were kind of tar targeting the moms and they would tell their kids, you know, go, go, go work at the Heritage, go apply at the Heritage. We are seeing very little, if not zero traffic from any high school kids right now. And that was a lot of the staff that we were uh, uh, using to backfill on the weekends. I, I was in OD this past weekend. I was here all weekend. They had, would you have two people? Fitz came in on his day off to work. I only had two people to deliver, right? So um, it's hard right now. In your call, did you all discuss what some of the solutions might be? Uh, is there a solution um, besides money? They are, uh, we have all submitted as far as um, uh, acquiring talent and acquiring employees, we have all submitted um, different things that we're doing at the different communities. So there will be a list that's put out of what different people are doing. I can tell you the gentleman down in Phoenix, right? They're, they're right in the middle, he's in Scottsdale, they're right in the middle of their season down there, right? Winter time, that's, that, that's season in Phoenix. He, is, uh, he has plenty of servers. Uh, they do not have culinary. Uh, restaurants and hotels and the resorts down there, they said are paying $5,000 sign-on bonuses for cooks. Now you've got someone in Chicago who has plenty of culinary but doesn't have any servers. Right? We don't have either. Um, but um, So yeah, we're looking forward to, to seeing some of these different things. We've got the, we've got the uh, the acquisition bonus and the retention bonus, the sign-on bonus that we're doing. Uh, Ashley's doing a lot of social media postings. Um, we had the uh, job fair here. Uh, as far as nursing, we're looking, learn, looking to do maybe a lunch and learn event at the beginning of January to try and get people in here. Uh, I've said it before, we know that we suffer from an, uh, an awareness, right? We're not open to the public. Although the past, past couple of nights, people can't get reservations and it comes up that the Fireside Grill has reservations available. So we've had the public try and come in to, have, to eat in the restaurant. So we have an awareness program. We're not open to a problem. We're not open to the public. People don't know, you know what we have here. Uh, whenever we get somebody on property, they talk about how beautiful the community is, how, how, how great everything is. We, we've got to get people in here. That's what we tried to do with the career fair. And we, we got very little foot traffic out of there. And I did a lot of advertising um, for that. So we, we are in an area that is just absolutely saturated with restaurants, hotels, all right? We have zero public transportation, all right? And we're in an affluent area where a lot of these kids don't have to have to work.
Every single restaurant around here is short staffed. You know, you go there, you see the signs, everybody's short staffed, please be kind to the staff. They're the ones that showed up to work. It's the same thing here, right? Some people mistreat the employees, and, and that's a big reason why a lot of people have gotten out of the service industry, right? They're, they're mistreated, they're, they're not making a lot of money, uh, they're expected to be on call 24-7. Anytime somebody calls out, they're getting called to come in. Um, you know, we got to take care of the people that we have here. And, and, you know, like I said, we're the candidate. You know, we're not going out after candidates anymore. We're the candidate. We, we've got to try and get them here. reached out to, to a lot of different, um, um, now whether she's reached out to that one particular, I don't know, but I, I do know that she's reached out to, to different types of agencies and stuff like that. Part of the problem we suffer with is we don't have any way of getting them here. There is no public transportation uh, to, to get down here. I, I'll, I'll mention it to her. Because there's Free Hall Church of Christ, Free Hall Baptist, and Free Hall Methodist. Mark, what is the reason why we have to have such early delivery service on our Sunday deliveries, which is still church time when they normally deliver? Um, that's just the, that's the time that we've been delivering them for a year and a half now. Um, it's meant to be a midday delivery. Brunch was at that time. That's, that's the reason we continued it at, at that time. Dinners usually were noon or after for church people. And you're pretty well finished up by noon, I believe, now. Is it, isn't, it, isn't it possible to deliver a little bit later on Sunday to meet the you normal? Do it later on Sunday, no. Can you deliver it right now, later on Sunday? Is that available? We, we have to deliver later on Sunday. The thing you want for this, we have a lot of residents. We have a few residents who ask for their delivery to be delivered at like 1 o'clock on a Sunday. We, 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 do, uh, we do take care of them. So, we, yeah, we have the ability to do it as well. They will now. do and <laughs> they work the day um, I, I guess that's something that we can take a look at I don't I don't think that I don't know that I you know that's been explored um, as far as providing a transportation service I don't know what the liabilities are or insurance required on something like you know I can't speak intelligently about that I, I can bring that up as a suggestion um, I don't know how you determine where you go or what you how you do that. Um, but it, I mean, sir, I, I, I'm willing to listen to any ideas. So uh, that's certainly something that we can uh, bring up and ask about. Well, there may be some other organizations doing it. Anybody else? Well, thank you all. Go ahead. Yeah. Mark, has it ever been considered? I know our tip system, which we're involved with right now for the annual gift deal, most of those people have to wait till later in the year in order to receive that particular 
that must be one of your competition problems that anybody else in the rest of the industry normally gets tipped as they go. What would happen if they had a tip system that was at least quarterly instead of the year for the waiters and waitresses? Uh, we, do, we do not have any tip system here. There, there is no, no gratuity system. Everything is a flat rate. There are no servers, bartenders. There, there is nobody here making gratuity. But you haven't had no. this problem before, I don't believe. And this is a new problem to be this crisis. Yeah, yep. That, that's, that's another challenge that we're faced with as far as, uh, and we've already increased wages. We're looking at doing another wage increase. Um, but you can go and wait tables. I'm sure you can go over to Connors or Sperry's or Perry's or some of these high-end restaurants and you can walk out of there with a couple hundred dollars a night as a server. Um, I'm sorry? Uh, downtown, uh, those people aren't working at Sperry's and that till 2 a.m. Not, not down here, they're not. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's another challenge, right? You can only post for a server position. You can post for a bartender position. Um, uh, Nashville hospitality professionals that you post on Facebook, in order to post on that uh, website, uh, your openings, uh, you have to put a uh, wage rate on there. You're, you're, you're not allowed, it won't get posted. You have to put a rate on there. So we can put $18 down an hour for a server. Now you've got to start the communication while well, you're not getting tipped. And, and now you're only at 18, 18 bucks an hour, right? So if you work a six hour, a seven, eight hour shift, you know, figure it out. <clears throat> so, um, you know, that presents some challenges. However, we do, it, it can be advantage. It's, it's, it's certainly more of a disadvantage than it is advantage. What we hope to find are those people that maybe they don't want this, uh, roller coaster fluctuation in how much money they're gonna make or, you know, are they gonna be busy? Are they gonna be slow? Am I gonna make tips or, um, you know, the pandemic hit and all these restaurants shut down and weren't making anything. Well, we didn't lay anybody off, right? So, you know, there's some people there too where that steady income and they know what they're making every week and they can budget accordingly that, that, that that's a benefit to them. And that's kind of what we, we, we hope and you know, what we're trying to find here. It's a, it's a tough challenge right now. It's, I, I've never seen anything like that. And I've worked in some resort areas and, and where it was really, really difficult to, to get people. Um, some of the ski resorts out in Colorado, you know, it, it was very tough to, to, um, to get people. And if you had a powder day, if you got a bunch of snow the night before, those, those, those people were all going skiing. They weren't coming to work. <laughs> there was one reason why they were out there, and that was to ski. And that's what they were going to do. If you got a, if they had a powder day, that's what they were going to do. You fire them. They'll have a job later on that day before they're finished with that pre-ski. Um, you know, it's crazy. So <clears throat> it's kind of similar now. People, I don't know. A lot of people have left the industry. Uh, that's what that's the stats that you get there's people driving around on the roads so. yes sir uh, with changes of COVID dropping down I mean could you go back to the same line which would cut down the amount of serving you have to do individually the only way the buffet would help us uh, service wise is if we went to only buffet you would not be able to open that um, salad bar and do a la carte. It takes a lot of manpower right now. They, they still want us serving. Now, if we were to go to self-service to where the residents fed themselves, then we just did a buffet. You, you still need staff to service the buffet and, and take care of all that. Um, that's why we haven't opened the buffet now. I think we, we, we did it on uh, 4th, uh, 4th of July and we did it on Labor Day and found out that it takes about eight people just to service the buffet. And you really don't save any service staff on, on something like that, right? Because they were still taking care of you at, at your table. I mean, right now, uh, you, you know, at night, if, if we've got five servers, we're lucky, right? And, and that's a lot. People say, why do we still need reservations? Well, 
That's exactly why you need reservations, because we can't have 129 people come down to the restaurant at one time and want to, want to get sat. Right? We won't have any servers. You, know, you start seating a server with six, seven tables, I, I promise you they're not working here. They'll, they'll leave. Uh, we don't have the people in the kitchen either to accommodate everybody wanting to order. And, and if we're to ask you to wait at, at, at the front desk, uh, it's going to cause a lot of heartburn with people. They, they, they don't want to wait. They want to come in and see. Or, or, or they're going to look in the restaurant and say, well, I see empty tables right there. And you're, you're right. There are empty tables. We don't have anybody to, to wait on. So um, trying to do it with four and five people in there. You see Fitz, Fitz Amy, Tyler, myself. Uh, we're seating people. We're waiting on tables. We're bartending. We're bussing tables. Um, we, we don't have anybody to put over in the steeplechase to, uh, to to Ten Bar. Those of you that met our bartender last Thursday at the Veterans Day dinner on, on Friday, she they asked her to stay stay late at her other work, and she said that uh, she had accepted a second job and was going to the Heritage, and so they uh, they uh, promoted her to assistant manager and gave her a big raise. <laughs> worked one day for us <laughs> so um, yeah it's hard right now to try and keep that restaurant going right now anybody else again thank you all very much and I'll be available if anybody wants to come see me and certainly if you want to speak in private you can shoot me an email or give me a call on my phone and we'll, we'll set up a time Thank you. Thank you.